Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Today, we are going to take a look at all of the features and deliverables that are starting work in the month of February. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you guys so much for the support. It is truly appreciated. And if you do enjoy my content, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. So with each month passing, I do like to put together a video that takes a look at all of the work that is kicking off each month and also finishing each month just to keep us all more informed as to what is going on in the background. Now before we get to it, just because a feature on the progress tracker has work beginning or completing in a particular month does not necessarily mean that it will be released that quarter, the next quarter, or even in that year, as there could still be some more work required from other teams as well as the downstream teams like audio, visual effects, and so on. Or even priorities can shift and things can get pushed back until needed later on. It is, however, a good guide to see what could potentially come to the PEU when, but at the very least, it shows us what work is scheduled to be done at what time of the year. So with that said, let us take a look at all of the deliverables and features that have work starting in the month of February. Now we're going to kick it off with FPS Devices Tier 1, and this is from the Weapon Features team, and says it is further work on the throwable and consumable devices like grenades and med pens. This will enable CIG to more easily create new items with different effects when used, and it will include development of deployable devices or items that can be carried around as part of a player's loadout and then equipped and deployed onto the surface. Now I know that CIG do plan to create all manner of various FPS deployables like shields, hollow displays of players, a whole range of grenade types, and I'm pretty sure a mini turret was mentioned at one point, I can't remember when though. So the skies are pretty much the limit when it comes to these kinds of devices for both offensive and defensive purposes, and even non-combat specific options as well. So it will be great to see how these items evolve and what the first round will be and then the next round. And as it stands right now on the progress tracker, FPS Devices Tier 1 has 21 weeks work that kicks off around now and is set to complete around early July. Next up, we have one from the Planet Tech team, which we actually just heard about a little bit on Star Citizen Live, and it's called Lava Tech. And this involves modifying and tuning River Tech to produce impressive lava rivers and lakes. Now, this will, of course, be for the planets that require it. There is one in Pyro, I think, and I do feel alongside the Fire Tech that CIG have been developing, this could be quite an interesting combination. Hopefully once Pyro does come, or whatever planet that has lava on it, it'll be ready for it. I know they said during Star Citizen Live that they're not sure if they're going to get it ready for the first iteration of Pyro, maybe later on. But this work is kicking off this month, and has five weeks work, which will come to a close mid-March. So if they make good progress here, then there's a good chance that we will see it when Pyro does eventually arrive. Now, a favourite of mine, and one that I have been excited for ever since we heard about it, is long distance probing. Now this is for how exploration will evolve and it involves the process of firing out probes long distances that travel at the quantum travel speed into just black space and then waiting for data to come back to analyze so we can determine if there is potentially any anomalies worth investigating. So they'll send out these probes, they will have a radius in which they can detect certain signatures and then based on our knowledge of what puts out what signature, we can determine whether it's something we want to look into further or not. Now, this isn't actually the work on the gameplay. It is creating, I assume, the backend system to allow it to work, as the work here on the progress tracker is from the Systemic Services and Tools team, so Tony Zurevex team. However, it does only have five weeks work that should have kicked off already and will be coming to an end around the beginning of March. And I'm expecting that once the work is done by Tony's team, it'll be shifting over to the gameplay teams to find a place to slot it into their schedule somewhere and then actually begin crafting the gameplay. Whether it comes this year or not is obviously dependable on where the resources are for the teams working on it, but I cannot wait to see this evolve. Now, one quick one here. We have AI arcade machines. As we have heard recently, this is an AI behavior where NPCs will play multiple rounds on an arcade machine with various emotional results depending on whether they win or lose. This was spoken about in the monthly reports as the AI teams are working on this now and will be a part of the whole big AI system that will give each NPC their day-night cycles, 
their traits, behaviors, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy. And this will just be a part of the leisure activities that are available to all the NPCs. It is also going to be needed for Squadron 42 as members of the crew will be relaxing when they're off duty. So that's why it's probably been prioritized. The work here though lasts seven weeks. That looks to complete around mid-March. Now this next one is one that I am really looking forward to seeing and is the final part of the player interaction experience, which is also known as Pi. And it is the tier two version of this. We have tier zero, tier one, and tier two. And this is the visor, hood, and helmet. Now it'll be quite a while until we see this as it has 33 weeks work from the actor feature team kicking off around now and finishing at the end of September. But this says that it builds on the existing helmet hood with a new look and feel. It also includes a new equip and remove experience of the helmet, a boot up and power down sequence, and transitions between FPS and ship hoods, so when you're getting in and out of the ship. So this will have brand new hoods for all of the helmets that we have, and CIG have mentioned in the past that many helmet hoods will be specific to the intended helmet's role, like combat helmets having more combat specific heads up displays, exploration helmets having hoods that are contextual to that role as well, and so on, maybe environmental readouts. And with the ability to physically take off and put on the helmet and then carry it under your arm, they will become proper physical items, not a instant box that we get when we're looting them. But I'm also hoping that we get that feeling where you feel like you've got a helmet on. Like we saw in some of the older videos where the heavy helmets were particularly constricting of the visibility, just to kind of make you feel encased. Plus with the HUD boot up and power down sequence, I feel like that'll just be one hell of a cool thing to experience. Now let's talk ships. The first one we have starting work in February is the MISC Hull D, which is the second biggest hull ship in the series. And it says building, implementing and balancing MISC's heavy cargo hauler as a flight ready vehicle. However, this is only from the vehicle concept art team and only lasts two weeks, of which they appear to be mostly halfway through. So there is definitely more work to be done from other teams before we see this monster arrive in the PU. But with the hull A slated for 317 and the hull C almost complete now, a lot of the work is probably much quicker to do when you're just putting that onto the hull D. Next, we have the Origin X1. This is Origin's entry into the hoverbike category. Now, the work on this kicked off at the beginning of February and is scheduled for 23 weeks work until early July. So a little while to go now, but it will be a nice addition to go alongside the Dragonfly, the Nox, now the Hover Quad as well. It'll be quite the lineup of Gravelev bikes, especially for racing. So there are two unannounced vehicles that start work this month in February. The first one that should have kicked off already has 14 weeks work scheduled in with the vehicle concept art team and comes to a close early in mid-May. The second vehicle has 13 weeks work with the EU vehicle content team that should be starting any day now and also finishes around the same time of mid-May. Now I don't know what these two could be. We are still yet to see the refinery ship or even the Starfarer refinery options on the progress tracker. So one of them could be something like that, but it's anyone's guess at this point. So to finish with, we're going to move on to the tech specific deliverables. The first one is the name resolving API with the persistent tech team. And this says engine implementation for entity class name resolving service. Now, I'm not sure what this relates to. Could have something to do with the entity graph, but I don't know enough to say with any certainty. I do know it has five weeks work that kicked off at the beginning of February and should finish just as we move into March. The next piece of tech is called long term persistence enhancements, which is changes to long term persistence that supports the new inventory and shared database. Its functionality, they say, will stay the same, but the system will read and write the data from the new Entity Graph database. Now, although, again, I'm not sure what this means for us as the player, I do know that the Entity Graph is an important piece of the persistent streaming and server meshing puzzle, and I think it is also needed for true persistence. Anyway, this only has five weeks work starting around the end of February and should finish right at the end of March. And the final piece of tech we have is Look IK Architecture Refactor, which is to update the existing Look IK system to remap I trajectory to use I expressions that are defined in rig logic. So it sounds like it's going to be more accurate I looking directions and so on. 
which we did hear about in the monthly report about the NPCs no longer staring straight at you or looking a little odd. But it could be something entirely different. I don't know. So that is it for the video. Some great features beginning their work this month, which many may be a little way off yet, but I'm sure with some, we will start seeing them on Inside Star Citizen Sprint Report as they make progress. But with that said, if you do enjoy my videos, please do consider subscribing. You're all more than welcome to hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, it does do the channel a big favour and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.